In this video, I'm going to talk um, exhaust gas recirculation valve and possibly also positive crankcase ventilation. There are various improvements I need to make to this engine and I, I think the EGR is going to be the key one amongst them. So um, I'm going to find some gloves because this is going to be a mucky old job and we'll get started. Gloves in place, having to dress up a bit today, it's getting cooler here in paradise. Uh, so what is an exhaust gas recirculation valve? Uh, well, what it does is take um, some exhaust um, gas, as you might expect, and recirculates it. It pumps it back into the intake system. On diesels, I think it can be anywhere up to 50% of the intake charge can be EGR, usually on a lighter throttle. On petrols, more like maximum of 15. And uh, it's all about um, trying to reduce the nitrous oxide emissions, something diesels are notorious for, especially more modern diesels. And it, effectively, you're trying to burn those out by burning them again. I think that is very much um, the thinking on them. I don't even know where it is on this engine, um, but I think um, it's under here. So I think I'm going to take this top cover off, first of all. Right, with the three bolts removed, that top cover can come off again. Nice and easy. And here is our exhaust gas recirculation valve. It is this gubbins here. Um, it will be easier if we get this off as well. I can't remember if this is attached. It is. Now, it is possible to get um, blanking kits for the EGR. So you just take it out of the equation altogether. Uh, there are two reasons for not, <coughs> not fitting one of those. One is that they cost about 30 pounds and uh, this is meant to be a cheap car so cheap fixes are always for the win but secondly the EGR is doing something important it is reducing those horrible nitrous oxides and it's the nitrous oxides which um, particularly in cities are causing all the trouble they're the ones that um, are, are damaging people's lungs they're not nice nitrous oxide they're very bad news indeed so I, I think this is actually doing a useful thing so here we go, uh, if we come down and show you what we've got here. So this is our exhaust gas recirculation valve. There's a vacuum feed here. That's the feed in from the exhaust and then into the um, air intake system. Uh, I will say uh, this is far from um, one solution. Um, just cleaning the EGR, oh, if I bring you back up again, uh, is not gonna fix all the problems. Uh, there's also the PCV, the positive crankcase ventilation. Uh, that's another valve um, somewhere um, on the top of the engine, I think. And uh, I do have a new one of those um, sitting in a box somewhere. Um, same as a Freelander. Um, so I've got one of those to go on. But uh, you also, it's, it's a good idea to go through the entire intake system. Get the inlet manifold off, clean everything up as much as possible. We're going to be limited by time, but I'm curious to see what state the EGR is in. Uh, I don't know if that's my problem, but the, the, the lack of power has come back today. We've had a couple of days of just pottering around the village, and uh, yeah, the, the turbo isn't kicking in like it was the other day again. So um, I don't know if that's EGR related. They can get so choked up, they restrict the airflow to almost nothing. Um, or if I've got another issue, it could be veins sticking on the turbocharger. These are all problems I'm not used to having. I didn't even know we had variable vein technology on the turbo, so that could be an issue as well. So I'm not necessarily going to fix the problem today, but I am curious to see just how disgusting this EGR is. Uh, it should be quite easy to remove. We've got a little um, hose clip there, hose clip there, vacuum pipe to just pull off there, four bolts, hot, then hold the EGR in place so um, I need a slotted screwdriver uh, to start with and then I'm gonna say hmm I reckon they're 10 mils um, to remove the EGR now if you don't like Rover 75s I must apologize for all the 75 content there has been lately but um, uh, un unsurprisingly it has done really well for views because I think a lot of people are interested in these cars uh, they're a car that because of the dem demise of MG Rover uh, they were sort of lauded from the moment, well, they were still in production and people um, had a following for these cars. Like I said, this is actually my second. I had one a number of years ago. I didn't get on with it at the time. Uh, is there somewhere to put that out of the way? Um, 
And so this time around, I'd been offered the car and I really, really didn't want the Vector anymore. I just was not getting on with it. Um, like, you know, some cars are like that. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought I was going to come into this and be able to do a video telling you all the things I don't like about the Rover 75. And there are things I don't like. Uh, they are fairly complex, but I'm not sure they're necessarily problems for the unique to the 75. I think an awful lot of cars of this generation, we're into the 21st century now, um, are just horribly complex and a bit of a pig to work on. Now, people complain about these cars having problems because they're a Rover, but it's worth remembering, this is a BMW, really. It's BMW's car, it's BMW's technology to a, a large degree. So it seems a bit unfair to sort of laugh because it's a Rover. In fact, the BMWs that use these engine had swirl pots in the intake system, which make the problems even worse. It's just something else to get gunked up. So it's the mixture of sooty rubbish coming through the exhaust and into the EGR, and uh, th that um, crankcase breather letting a bit too much oil in is what makes everything gunk up. Uh, well, should do these bolts, they are indeed tens. So you can get blanking kits. There is a, an even cheaper option, or you can just disable the EGR entirely. I don't know exactly how you do that. Things need blanking off and blanking off correctly, but you can do it without needing to spare spend any money. But these days, the MOT testers should be keeping an eye out for this sort of stuff. It is now not allowed to tinker with such systems. So uh, that's another reason for wanting to do this properly. I don't want to generate an MOT failure. That would be pretty stupid on a car I know currently isn't going to pass anyway because of the ABS and rot issues. Uh, we'll be going in for an MOT and the rectification work at some point. Yeah, some people somehow concluded from my last video that it wasn't going to be love for the Rover 75, but it really is. It's just such a nice car to drive around. Um, Another reason for not getting too involved with stripping this engine down today is I've got to drive all the way to the British Motor Museum uh, in Warwickshire tomorrow. I'm going to do some very exciting filming there. Really looking forward to it. Uh, actually with the Jaguar Heritage Collection. But uh, the British Motor Museum was originally the Heritage Motor Collection. It was British Leyland, the very last. And I think possibly the very first Rover 75s are in that collection. Uh, might not have time to go and look at them tomorrow, but this seems the best car on the fleet for that journey, I think. So, yeah, I, I don't want to dismantle it too much. I have rolled Foxan out um, just in case, and the GSA could be a good plan B if something goes horribly wrong today. Uh, I almost did roll the Rover in <clears throat> and then had that thought, well, if I disable it, I'm stuck here because it was blocking in all the cars. So decided not to go that way. But yes, um, in, in case you haven't guessed, there's probably a lot of people new to the channel. My videos are anything but instructional. You might learn something along the way. I might learn something along the way. But I'm not necessarily showing you um, the best techniques. Um, my skills are firmly of the ham-fisted nature. Oh, Yes, I'm seeing why this is gonna be a job worth doing. Right, oh, here we go. It is off. Oh, and it's not too bad actually, as these things go. But if I bring you in for a closer look, look at the state of that. Let me get a torch to illuminate this better. Yeah, I mean, air is able to flow through that. I don't think this is my problem, if I'm entirely honest. <coughs> but yeah, look at, look at the state. Of that in there, it's a proper gunky old mess. I don't know how well the valve is working, but it looks pretty open at the moment. Uh, and it's shut on that one. So this is where the exhaust fumes come in to be funneled into the intake. But yeah, that's, that's not a good amount of stuff to have in your intake system really, is it? So I'm gonna take this to the parts washer. Words I've never said before, but I do actually have one. And uh, we'll see if we can clean it up a bit. Incidentally, it appears I now have water in here. Uh, that would appear to be a tap. It's um, a little simple in its layout. Um, I've parked this too close to the wall and now can't open it. There we go. We are in. 
Right, we'll have that up there for a bit more light and uh, we'll get this in here. And uh, this isn't all connected up, so it's not like I've actually got the feed um, of stuff coming in, but uh, I'm gonna go all manual. Have some big tin of degreasing stuff down here. So I'm gonna wedge a load of that in. And uh, we'll see if we can um, improve matters somewhat. So uh, yeah, let's try this brush first of all. Oh yeah, that's um, disgusting in there. Revolting. Uh, I could do have been able to soak this in here really. Oh, this stuff's doing a great job. It's um, definitely coming out. Right, I'm gonna persist doing this, but it's definitely already looking much better in there. This must be old degreaser. It um, seems actually really good. And uh, yeah, I shall persist and keep cleaning this up until it is clean. It's disgusting in here as well. Uh, I can see grime caked in the intake runner here. So I'm starting to think maybe I do need to get that off. Uh, that doesn't look too difficult to remove actually. Uh, I think we've got a series of tens holding it in place. So I think I'm gonna try and do that. By the way, this ring, um, automotive work light is great. Uh, I don't really like LED work light because I find they break all the time. But uh, this uh, has been a good one, I think. All right, a number of bolts <coughs> later, and we've got the intake manifold off. And uh, I think that's a lever out the metal clip. Yep, there we go, put that somewhere safe. And I think this is the map sensor. So that's manifold air pressure sensor, I think. But, ooh, yeah, we can, we can see. If I bring my light over, just how choked up it is in there. That's disgusting. So uh, we're gonna take the map out so it doesn't get damaged, and then we're gonna give this a blast in the parts cleaner. Because, uh, yeah, we're losing some efficiency there, I would say. Right, I'm glad I've got quite a lot of this um, degreaser, because it's um, coming useful today, I think. Oh, let me get this up on the edge. I'll pour a load in there as well. Oh, disgusting. Oh dear, this is um, spectacularly grim. Dirty old job, but uh, it turns out a very necessary one. Uh, my conclusion is I didn't do enough good enough job on this. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but it's still um, horribly caked up in there. So um, got a sacrificial screwdriver and uh, yeah, the soot and crud is just flying out. We've done a pretty good job on the manifold, so that's now drying. Uh, so that's been cleared out. Uh, but it's the EGR valve that is really in the firing line. And yeah, I'm, I'm just scraping um, an awful lot of crud out of this. Yeah, that has been one of the filthiest jobs I've ever done. But hopefully you can see it's um, looking a bit better in there. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but by heck it's a lot better than it was. So I'll look down the other end. Uh, so that should hopefully help the um, intake system a bit. So we'll let that dry fully. I've got the um, exhaust, not the exhaust, the inlet here as well. It's still a bit grim, but this was all coked up on the inside. In fact, there's still a bit. I'm gonna give that another go uh, with the scrapey screwdriver. Yeah, word of advice, wear gloves that are actually uh, waterproof. Uh, my hands are no disgusting. But my uh, EGR is looking a lot better, if still far from perfect. Uh, but it's uh, a lot cleaner in there than it was. So that'll do. The inlet manifold, similarly, oh, is looking quite a lot better in there. That was all coked up like crazy. It's still a little coked up, 
but I don't think that's going to make a massive difference to performance. I mean, when you think about performance, uh, it doesn't take much of an enlargement in throttle body size to uh, really make a difference. Oh, I'm still getting filth out of this. So uh, any restriction is not going to be a good thing, really. Right, that needs drying down there. I'm seeing that manifold dropping on the floor. Uh, I'm going to wash my hands and then put some fresh gloves on. Might even pause for tea. So in very typical me format, um, everything has fallen into place. I was actually meant to be going to Gaiden last week, but I had to postpone that because of my cold, because I could barely speak, and that's not great if you're doing videos. Also, I didn't really want to meet people while I was full of cold, uh, so that's passed. Which has given me time to tackle this job, and given them time to bring water into my unit. So... Uh, Everything has kind of come together on this one. We'll see if it makes any difference at all. Oh, I should point out, someone warned me I'd left my screwdriver here. Yes, apparently I did. That's been there for quite a while. Um, hopefully it hasn't had too much of an effect on the bonnet. It's gone slightly rusty. Uh, I should pay attention to my comments more often. Whoops. Still on, on the T, but while I'm doing that, I thought I'd have a look at this um, PCV. It's a genuine um, Land Rover replacement made in the Czech Republic because this BMW engine was also fitted to the Freelander 1. Uh, it started off with the L series Rover engine and then they changed to the BMW engine. So we've got a couple of, of new rubber seals. I'll put those back in the box. Uh, a little O-ring. Also put that back in the box so we don't lose it. And then we've got this little sort of cotton bobbin. I suppose it must be the breather. So designed to let fumes out um, but not oil, in theory. Because as the pistons are going up and down in the engine, imagine four of them, I've only got two hands, um, it's creating pressure in the crankcase um, as they do so. So that pressure needs to escape and it escapes through here. And rather than just venting oily fumes all over the place, it does it into the inlet so the oil gets burnt. That's the theory behind it. Um, I think I've got to take the inlet um, the air filter assembly off again, which is up at the back of the engine here. So this thing, got to take the oil cap off and we'll have a look in there. And uh, it, it's probably worth doing this job because um, it doesn't help with the gunking up. If that filter's not in great shape, then um, oil, get, too much oil mist gets past it into the inlet, mixes with a soot from the exhaust and blah. Uh, as with anything, these systems work really well when the engines are sort of brand new, but uh, a few years down the line they can be problematic, and this car is 19 years down the line, and about 155,000 miles. Incidentally, we've sold out of the larger hubnut mugs. A um, bit of feedback on these is that they look a bit unstable with a narrow base. Um, I'm inclined to agree. I'm trying to find a new supplier of a, a nice large mug that's a decent capacity. This is certainly that, but um, yeah, we, we need a better mug. We're working on it, it is in progress. Hopefully more designs on mugs as well. We shall see how we go. As ever, you can buy beanie hats and all sorts, mugs, stickers, at the Hubnut store, hubnut.org. There we go, it saves me having to do it at the end. Uh, it would be good to try and clean the valves up a bit, but other than a quick blast of carb cleaner in each inlet port, um, that's about as much as I can do today. I'm not going to start taking the head off and looking at valves. That's going a bit too far. Um, hopefully any crud that's residual will burn off through use. Right, I'm bored, so I'm just going to put my tea down on the battery and uh, start whipping these out. Oh yes, they're Allens, aren't they? I remember. Uh, I'm going to put a fresh pair of gloves on because the last pair got so disgusting with that job. So thank you to the person who sent me these gloves. Uh, they're not waterproof because they've got the, the material on the back, but they still keep your hands a lot cleaner than not wearing anything at all. And yes, this is the first day I've really had to wrap up at the unit. Um, I've got a jumper on, big coat, and uh, gloves, hat. Yeah, so I'm, I'm feeling quite cozy at the moment. We'll see how cold it gets over winter. I'm aware that could be an issue. Right. Uh, that's got to come off, so um, I shall find my Allen keys and get busy. Right, PCV lives in this thing here, so I've got to take the injector wiring off and get this little harness out the way to get this off, four Allen bolts, and then I should be able to lift it out. Uh, it's not the most 
convenient thing to get at, really, is it? Let's see, injector wiring, how is that held in place? Oh, very simply, there we go. Yeah, push down and then pull up, helps on the injectors, it turns out. Uh, ooh, torque spanner needed to remove this. What the hell? I hate working on modern cars. So what the hell do you want a torque spanner requirement for? I don't think I've got anything to match that. What I mean are these tiny little things here. You see, that is the torque on the top. Normally it's a sunk in to undo. That's a ridiculous thing. I've never even seen those before. Uh, perhaps that's just because I don't work on modern cars. Perhaps with good reason. I love saying modern cars of a 20 year old car, but that's a nut. Oh, well it's out. And you can see the disgusting state of the um, cotton bobbin. It is grim indeed. I wonder how that comes out. Uh, not entirely sure. Uh, there are fresh seals to replace both of these. Uh, unfortunately, I, I have a horrible feeling I've just snapped one of the um, return pipes off the injector. I think it was actually the wrong side of that. Uh, so that's a problem. Can I get the bit out of there? I think I better do that because if I can't sort this out, I am a bit screwed. See if I can encourage the bit that snapped off out. We'll see if we can glue it back on. Not ideal. Uh, but so very hubnut. This is not going well. Uh, I had that feeling today that there could be a job that would knacker things up and uh, I have found it. It is this job. This is fast becoming a problem. This is what I've done. This is the T piece that goes on top of the injector so the fuel line flows through it. Uh, that's just a return so it's fairly low pressure but yeah I've managed to snap it off. Uh, that is um, fast becoming a major problem because I don't know where I'm going to get one. This is the joy of living in the middle of nowhere. I've spoken to local motor factors, they haven't got them in stock. There is a car dismantlers, so I could try and see if I can find one there. Uh, well, there's no guarantee I won't snap something at that end. I, I don't run anything with anything like this, so uh, the chances of me having one kicking about are rather slim. Oh, what an annoyance, what an embuggerance. And I've still got the return pipe that came off. Uh, that still has, in one end, uh, the rest of that. So I can't reuse that either. Um, so all in all, a bit of a disaster. Marvellous. I'm going to be driving to um, Warwickshire in this car tomorrow. Ooh, that's getting a bit lengthy, isn't it? So I think we'd better take a break there. Um, I appreciate it. It's mostly a man cleaning something. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, as you can see, got a disaster, managed to break things. Uh, how am I going to solve this out when I've still got uh, a 200 mile journey to do the following day? You will have to wait for a future video because this has got far too lengthy. Um, but, but believe me, it is interesting. And my failed attempts to fix the problem without buying any parts are also interesting. Hmm cable ties anyway uh thank you very much for watching um hubnut store available for all your merchandise needs at hubnut.org i look forward to seeing you in a future video farewell it's actually a choke cable